is we don't call Peter denying Peter or Mark runaway naked Mark. Why should I be saddled with this title? I see your point, Thomas, but really, it's time to move on. <laughs> doubting Thomas. I mean, isn't that how we know that disciple? Doubting Thomas? And is that even fair? Well, I don't think it is. Um, if we see what scripture says about Thomas in John chapter 11, you have Jesus when Lazarus was sick and then he has word that he died. You hear Jesus saying, well, let's go back to Judea. And the other disciples are like, whoa, no way. Don't you remember those people just tried to stone you and arrest you? I don't think you should do that. And uh, Jesus explains to them, no, while you still have the light of day, you will not stumble. He knew when his time was and when his time wasn't. And had he knew where he was supposed to be and where he was supposed to go, but that sounded scary to go back to a place where they're going to be stoned. And we like to think those disciples were cautioning him against it because they're so worried about Jesus. And I'm sure that was it. I'm sure they weren't at all worried about what would happen to them if they went back there with him. But Thomas is the only disciple who speaks up bravely in support of Jesus' plan. When he hears that that is indeed what Jesus intends to do, he says to the other disciples, let's go to Judea so we can die with him. He's recognizing how dangerous it is. But he is also saying bravely, if my Savior is going to a dangerous place with death imminent, I'm with him. Why aren't we calling him brave Thomas? And in John 14, when Jesus tries to prepare the disciples for the fact that he's going to die, and he says that beautiful passage that we tend to recall during funerals, um, my father's house has many rooms. I go and prepare a place for you. You know the way I'm going. And, and Thomas, bless his heart, says, wait a minute. We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? He's the one who speaks up and dares to question because he wants to be able to follow, but he's not sure how. And that's when Jesus is able to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are still called to live within our Savior, within that love where the presence of God is, and we know that God's dwelling place is not just with us, it's within us. And we carry that where we go as we follow Christ. Why do we not call Thomas the one who goes after the answers? Why don't we call him that? You know, there's that time where Jesus does come to see all the disciples in the upper room and, and it explains the situation. The doors are locked because they're afraid of the Jews. This is right after uh, Jesus' death on the cross and those disciples are frightened. It is not safe to be a follower of Christ. So they are locked in an upper room. But guess who is not there? Not doubting Thomas, but brave Thomas. You know, we don't know why he wasn't there. Some people say, well, he was so full of despair and doubt, he just wouldn't even go where the disciples were. My own personal theory is if they're locked in a room, they're going to need to eat. And I think Thomas was the only one with guts to go out and get food to bring back to everybody else. <laughs> so imagine his distress when he was the one who was brave enough to go out there and provide food for everybody. And Jesus had the nerve to show up when he wasn't there. That was just not fair. Was it fair? That was so unfair. And so, no question, he was mad and said, well, you can tell me he was here, but until I, because Jesus showed his hands and his side to the disciples. Thomas says, until I, can put my finger 
and those holes in his hand, put my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. And for that, he's labeled Doubting Thomas. I think he was righteously indignant, Thomas, <coughs> myself. And so, then what happens? Then a week passed, a whole week. Thomas gets a nice cooling down period. Sometimes when we get mad about something, we need a little time to cool down. A week later, the disciples are together, and this time, Thomas is with them. I'm predicting he just arrived with food again. <laughs> but they're all together. And who comes then but Jesus? Now, remember, we're calling him Doubting Thomas because Thomas did not believe what the other disciples said, or he was just too mad to accept it at the time. I'm not sure. But those other disciples had word that Jesus was risen. Remember when the women, depending upon which gospel you read, several women or just Mary, came with the news that Jesus was no longer in the tomb. And did they all believe it? No, those doubting disciples, depending upon what gospel you read, thought it was just a frivolous tale of women, or they questioned what they said, and they had to run and check out for themselves. They didn't just believe. Um, and of course, they believed in the resurrected Christ when they saw him. <coughs> so okay, they're all together again. There's Thomas this time. He's there, and Jesus comes and says, see, put your, touch the holes in my hands, put your hand in my side. And does Thomas do that? He doesn't. He just immediately says, my Lord and my God. He didn't really need to do that. He just needed to know that he wasn't chop liver, that Jesus didn't come just to the other disciples and leave him out. Thomas needed to know that he was important too. Bad things happen when we feel like we're not important too. And we have to be so careful in church families because this place is full of righteous people who can very easily become righteously indignant because there are many people who are not working as hard as we are. There are many people who aren't as kind as we are. There are many people who aren't as thoughtful as we are. There are many people who, the list goes on. And it's so easy with our hearts full of good intentions to think, darn it, why isn't that other person measuring up a little bit more? And what am I, chop liver? Does God really want me to do all of this? Well, I looked really hard in scriptures in the whole New Testament. Can anybody remember a place where Jesus said, now you guys work harder? I don't think it's there. I think it's the opposite. I think when Martha is ticked because she's working like a lunatic in the kitchen and Mary's out listening to Jesus and complains to Jesus, Jesus doesn't say, yeah, the rest of you guys get in the kitchen and help, at least you, Mary. Mm -mm. He says, no, she's chosen the better thing. And when the disciples are jockeying for position, can I sit at your right hand and your left hand when we ask that? Does Jesus says, yeah, position is really important. You've got to make sure you get on the right rung of the ladder. No. Jesus ties an apron around his waist, and he washes their feet. Jesus invites us not to keep measuring ourselves up against one another to see who is more favored who is more this or more that. It's poison when we do that. And those of us who have raised children know exactly what that looks like in a family. Um, five children, and so I can't tell you the number of times one kid has said, well, how come he gets to do that? How come she? And I would just always say, well, because I love them more than you. <laughs> they would laugh too. 
too. But you have to sometimes say that stuff out loud. Kids are good at saying it out loud. Thomas was good at saying out loud when he really was mad and felt left out. But we have to learn to question. Remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Are we really walking in Jesus' way when we look at other people and compare ourselves? When we're trying to figure out who's up and who's down, that is never of Christ. Never. Last night, I had the great privilege, Ron and I, of attending an anniversary meeting for our high noon uh, AA group that meets in our church, and we love having them come. And they invited us. What was the anniversary, Tim? 35 years. 35 years that group has been together. And they had a checkered past. They recited about the number of other places they met that they got kicked out of. And we've successfully had them here for how long? I've been around five years. So. Okay, at least five years could be more. Uh, it's been quite a while, and we'd love to have them. But let me tell you what I've learned from the folks in AA that I've had the privilege of visiting with and talking with. One of the things I've learned is that they're not all about just okay, we're not going to drink anymore, or we're not going to, for NA, we're not going to use drugs anymore. It's a lot more than that. It's about what within me needs to be healed and grow and change. That is of God. That's why they always talk about a higher power, because that's how do we let God change and move us. Somebody the other day explained to me that to continue in sobriety, they just have to do the next right thing. Like, okay, I did this right thing, and then I don't have to figure out everything, but what's the next right thing? Someone last night, I got this used napkin and I was taking notes, was talking about how easy it is to build walls. And folks who have addictions to substances have the advantage, really, of being able to see a little more clearly what it is they're doing. But we all do that. We all kind of build walls between us and other people. And they were talking about the kind of walls that can separate us and how some of the rocks in that wall can be so polished and look so special to us, but they're really separating us. And I should read you this story sometime because it's beautiful, but the short version is those rocks are things like jealousy, pride, all those ways that are comparing ourselves to others build barriers between ourselves and others. Really, doubting Thomas was just pouring out his heart, honest Thomas. He was a person who dared to ask questions he needed answers to. He dared to say, this isn't fair when it felt unfair. And he dared to stick with it. Notice a week later, seven days later when Jesus comes back, Thomas has not given up on that group. He has not said, oh great, you got something I didn't, I'm out of here. Mm -mm. Thomas is right there with them. Maybe we should call him faithful, persistent Thomas. And you know what the church has handed down to us? You know what we know about Thomas? After, when the disciples started to venture out and share the word of Christ, do you know where Thomas went? Paul uh, and some of the other disciples got out of Jerusalem a little bit. Paul got as far as Rome. Thomas went beyond the Roman Empire into <coughs> India and founded a strong Christian church that is alive today, my work in India, but a strong Christian church in India, and he may even have gone, gotten as far as the Near East. We're not positive, but at least we are sure. Uh, Toma is a popular name in the Christian church in India. And so we know that Thomas was brave, Thomas followed through, shared what he knew because of who he dared to be. 
in Christ because he knew the way, the truth, and the life. And it was all about daring to connect, taking down walls, and not letting the poison of comparing himself to others change the course of his discipleship. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat>